Good evening. Good evening. One more time. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. And thank you for putting up with uh, my greetings every single time for those of you who are regulars. It is uh, one wet night out there. It is coming down pretty hard and uh, kind of inspired to see so many people here tonight. Thank you for coming out. I'm council member uh, Ben Talos. And I grew up in the neighborhood. And I think anyone who is in the neighborhood, even for a little bit, notices that we don't have enough parks. And in fact, uh, the Foundation for Parks did a survey, and we come out the big bottom of the city when it comes to per capita parks. So in my district, it's from Second Avenue or East River, sometimes Lexington, as well as Roosevelt Island. And uh, our park is the Esplanade. And some of you have noticed that it's literally falling into the river. And uh, I've been working with uh, our Congresswoman, Carolyn Maloney. We're joined here by uh, Shelby from her office, as well as Trisha, who used to be with her office, but is still a strong member of our community. And uh, we've been working together in a task force to support our Esplanade. And uh, she's actually given me the marching orders to make sure we get this done. Um, so we've got a lot of things happening uh, by, by virtue of circumstance and being the, the right person in the right place. But just to give a little bit, um, we have, if you may have noticed, Phase 2A uh, happening at Andrew Haswell Park. So Andrew Haswell Park is broken ground. We're moving forward. There will be more news on that. We have uh, Rockefeller University, and they'll be presenting first, and they'll be telling you a little bit about what happened as part of their uh, zoning process and uh, their timeline for moving forward. But it looks like 60 seconds to 68 is about to get redone. Um, and we were able to work very closely with HSS. They are amazing partners in the community. If you use that 71st Street Bridge, that's them. They put it there. We're really glad that they do and that they've maintained it for so long, so well. And uh, one of the things people may have noticed, uh, has anyone noticed that the, the, uh, the plants seem to die pretty quickly on the Esplanade? Any people? Uh, and so one of the problems is uh, water, water everywhere, but nothing for the plants to drink. Um, so we've been working very hard in between Rockefeller bringing water to the Esplanade and HSS bringing water to the Esplanade um, and redoing from 70th to 72nd right now, as well as a long-term commitment as part of this master plan envisioning for one Esplanade from 62nd Street to 78th Street. And then at 78th Street, we have the High Line on the Esplanade, which will be going from 78th to 81st Street. And you may have noticed that that ground is broken there as well. So in the span of a short 23 months since I've been here, we're seeing 60th Street to 82nd, 81st Street getting redone. We wanted to make sure that you were included in the process and that you got to have a say in what it looks like and get a little bit of a preview. Um, now, this is only possible when we work together as a community. Um, if the folks from Community Board 8 could just stand up, they are uh, our voice in the community. We're joined by Jim Pines and Barbara Rudder. And, um, I can't see you back. Peggy Price. Peggy Price, thank you. Uh, as well as Peggy Thank you. Public member. Public member. Yeah. Thank you. And so um, they are our voice day in, day out, and I work closely with them and just, they don't get paid anything, but they do amazing work, and one of the returns for their investment is this. And another thing is that we've been able to invest in building a conservancy. And so sometimes what Parks does is just not enough, but when you look at Central Park and the West Side and all the places that I'm very envious of and want to bring them here, uh, we've seen a model where if we can get together as a community, we can build a conservancy. So we have one that was founded by Jennifer Ratner, uh, who is here. And uh, if you want to just say hi to folks. And uh, she got this started, if we can give her a quick round. So conservancy is where we invest our time, our resources, into just conserving and taking care of and building things. And uh, Rockefeller has joined uh, that board as has now HSS, and we're hoping to have more institutions along the Esplanade to join on and support it. And uh, Rockefellers put aside $1 million to care for their portion of the Esplanade in perpetuity. So it's, that, that's forever. Um, that's long-term planning, and if we can just say thank you, and you'll hear a little bit more, but 
that whole part of the Esplanade will always be taken care of because there's a trust just for that. We're going to say thank you to Roger. And uh, from 70th to 72nd, HSS will be caring for their portion. So you are, your voice is important and you're part of it. So the format for tonight will be that I'm going to be asking, um, I will be asking uh, Jesse uh, to come up from the East River, uh, Friends of the East River Esplanade. Um, but I also just want to say uh, a strong thank you to our hosts and the ones who are making this phase of this possible. Uh, Lisa Goldstein, Risa Kaufman, and Neil Pastig Pastigan. Um, also to uh, Tim O'Connor and George Cantor at Rockefeller. Uh, and if Jessica, please join me. Hi there, I'm Jesse Marcellin, uh, new executive director of Friends of the East River Esplanade. Um, so happy to be here tonight. Um, we're a nonprofit uh, that works to restore, reinvent, um, and really improve the Esplanade from 60th to 120th streets. Um, I'd like to thank Council Member uh, Kalos for organizing this evening and um, for facilitating these um, really wonderful and hugely beneficial partnerships um, with Hospital for Special Surgery and uh, with Rockefeller University. Um, we're so excited uh, to see the next steps um, it, that you all are planning uh, to improve the waterfront um, and, and are excited to see those this evening. Um, we are always reachable um, and happy to help um, in any way we can as uh, we make these, um, these visions realities. Um, our website is www.esplanadefriends.org. Um, you can learn a little bit more about us um, and we've been doing. Um, thank you so much, and uh, I'll, I will probably speak up again in the question and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, if you're interested in the Esplanade, uh, specifically conservancy activities, plantings, fundraising, and being involved in, I'll say fundraising again, uh, that is the best place to, to give your time and energy, and please contact Jesse. I'd like to now ask uh, Rockefeller University to come up and present on uh, what the Eskimo is going to look like in their session. George Candler. I'm the Associate Vice President for Planning and Construction at Rockefeller. And I'm going to give you a brief summary of uh, how we've gotten where we are and where we're headed with our portion of the Esplanade. We began uh, a master plan for the university uh, actually in 2012. And as part of that, we went through a Euler process. And our project involves constructing a building over the FDR Drive and also making improvements to the Esplanade along our course of the project. So we actually got into the Euler process in the middle of 2013. Uh, before that, we went to the Community Board 8 and gave an informational briefing and we had a number of meetings with Community Board 8 through uh, the next year really as the planning involved and as the design involved. You can see on this chart the, uh, the design of our portion of the Esplanade progressed in parallel with that. Uh, one thing that we did in addition to uh, the community board meetings is that we had two uh, community design meetings at Rockefeller, and those were attended by members of the community board eight, uh, the friends of the Esplanade, and other community members who had an interest. And those were really great for us because we had some early design concepts, but uh, everybody came to the meetings and gave us new ideas and made us aware of things that we might not have thought of. And we learned quite a bit from that, and I think it really improved our design. And those um, ideas were incorporated into the design. So I press that. Um, I have a couple of images of our portion of the Esplanade. Um, this is looking north. Uh, you see our new building at the left, the river on the right. Uh, among the things that we got out of the design meetings were wider shared use between uh, pedestrians and bicyclists. 
Um, we were asked to remove, we had a lot of seating originally right up tight against the FDR Drive. We were encouraged to remove it from that and get it closer to the river. And we opened up our part of the river. We used to have a lot of planting right along the fence and we removed that to get better views. So it zoned better than it was. We also raised the sound barrier from where we had originally proposed at five feet. There will be an eight foot sound barrier and it will be well landscaped. So it will be a green wall between uh, the building and the river. This is another view looking south. It's actually taken from the corner of the Air Presbyterian looking south towards our building. Um, our portion of the Esplanade is a little different than some. It's quite narrow at the north end, and, and in the previous view, it widens out as we go farther south. As you will have noticed, we have begun construction. We began repairs of the, uh, the seawall bulkhead. Uh, this summer, and what really what that involves is we're, re we're repointing the entire portion of that seawall, and there are quite a number of granite blocks which over the years have fallen out and are at the bottom of the river. And with those gaps, it's allowed sinkholes to develop, and that's why you've seen these depressions. So we're going back, we're restoring the granite, we're uh, doing a proper foundation under uh, under the esplanade itself, so that will never be a problem again. Uh, we've also begun work on the FDR itself. What's going on with all the, in all the traffic is we're actually shifting the lanes of the FDR approximately eight feet towards the river. And that's so that we can do our foundations for the, for the building, which are up tight against the schist wall. Once the west foundations are in, that'll shift back. We'll do the east footings, and all of this foundation work will be done by next summer as our target. And then over next summer, we'll bring in the structure, steel structure, and there will be some closings at night. We'll pump the structure in place and begin to enclose the building. Once the building is enclosed, which will be mid-2017, it'll be safe to work on the Esplanade. And at that point, we'll begin in earnest the complete reconstruction of that portion of the Esplanade. And that will be mostly done in 2017, and then the final planting will be done in the first part of 2018. And all of the construction I mentioned up till now will be done primarily from the water side. We'll be bringing in materials on barges. Once we close in the building and we uh, reconstruct the esplanade, then we'll complete the interior of the building from the land side. So our, our, the esplanade itself will be done from mid-2017 through 2018. Our overall project will be really finished at the end of 2018 and will occupy it in early 2019. So that's, that's where we are. Thank you uh, very much. I want to note uh, two items. Uh, one, we, we tend to film everything. Uh, in my office and put it online for people who can uh, be here tonight. So please know that if you ask questions during the Q&A session, if we end up posting that, that will be public and just uh, for the presenters and everyone else and for anyone watching over YouTube, uh, we hope that you enjoy. And also, I uh, omitted that we've been joined also by the office of Assemblymember Rebecca Seawright and her chief of staff, uh, Kelly Medea, is here. Uh, and uh, we have a great ask uh, HSS to come up to their presentation. I'm really listening here how we can make sure that it feels like one seamless esplanade together and talk about all the great news. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming out tonight. Um, I'm Lisa Goldstein. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the hospital. I just want to say thank you um, to Council Member Kalos for his um, work on this and bringing this to all of you and allowing us to present tonight. Um, um, I'm actually not going to do the presentation, that's not my forte, um, but I am going to ask um, Allison from Canal Rothschild and Partners to do the presentation. And um, again, this is for purposes of uh, having comments from all of you. Unlike the Rockefeller plan, we are at the beginning of this project. Um, I feel obligated to let everybody know, and I think you all do know, that Parks Department obviously has to approve all of the things that we do on the Esplanade, as they did for the Rockefeller plan. 
Um, and then there's an opportunity then where it goes back to the community board. Um, but this is an opportunity for you to have some input into it. Um, we wanted to look and have a look and feel of the Rockefeller plan, but there are still some things that you might be able to see and point out that we could potentially do better and do differently. So um, thanks again, and uh, enjoy the presentation, as short as it is, but hopefully there will be some discussion around it. Thanks. Hi, um, I'm Alison Shipley. I'm a partner with the landscape architectural firm of Cornell Rothschild and Partners here in New York City. And we are working on uh, the section between 70th Street and 72nd Street. And as Lisa said, this plan is really, uh, the design of this is really taking cues from the work done in the Rockefeller section and just extending that further to the north. So uh, here you see the, um, the area that we're talking about. Um, some photographs of the existing condition. You can see it's not in great condition right now. Um, this is where the new building was going to be. So part of this section has the building next to it, part of it doesn't have the building next to it. Um, so this really shows the plan, and you can see this dotted outline. This is the section where the hospital, the special surgery building is right next to it, and these black um, squares are the columns that come down. So within that section, we're going to have the um, sound wall, uh, like was discussed earlier, and then in the northern section, the FPR drive, there's no building next to it, so there's no uh, sound wall there. And in between that is where the ramp comes down from East 71st Street. Uh, so that plan was, the, the previous plan was the existing conditions. There's a little bit of grass along here, just grass here and some trees at the edge of the waterfront. This is the proposed plan. So the grass is going to be re repo uh, replaced with um, much lusher plantings as you saw in those previous renderings and continuing that curved planter along the FDR edge um, at the um, 70, 71st Street section, we have benches along the waterfront in between those existing trees. Um, because those trees are there, they're already taking up some space, so it makes sense to put some benches in there. In the northern section, the benches are kept at the back so that we really have as much width as possible by the waterfront because this section is actually narrower than the Rockefeller section, which I think you can see in this plan, the top plan is the Rockefeller section, which is wide enough to have that planting in the middle and then another row of benches. So in the Rockefeller section, you have the divided uh, you know, pedestrian walkway by the waterfront and then the shared bike lane, pedestrian lane at the back. Here we don't have as much width, so we only have a single shared space. Um, and you can see in this, in this section, our width is really only it's pretty tight, it's 13 feet of paving plus the planting area. And this shows you the eight foot high um, sound barrier wall between the Esplanade and the FDR. And then these are the, the columns coming down. And this will be the planting between that and it's slightly raised up, just a foot or so, because there's a lot of foundations for those walls that don't let us bring the planting down low, so we have to bring it up a little, um, but as I say, that's 16 inches. Um, so similar to what you saw before, we're going to use the same uh, hexagonal block paving, have that curving edge along the planting area, do fairly lush plantings that are wind tolerant, salt tolerant, um, we are right on the waterfront here, and we are using the same kind of benches and land posts, and the existing railing will be renovated and refurbished and repainted and repaired. So that same railing will, will remain but be in better condition. Um, this is a view looking towards the north where you do see the sound wall and that, as I said, it, it will be heavily planted. And this is where we have the slightly raised up portion. So you've got that, that little curve there which we don't need in the other location. Um, so here's some of the plants that we plan to use. These plants were selected uh, to withstand that waterfront condition. So things that have been used along the esplanade. Mostly these are native plants with the exception of the ginkgo, which is sort of almost native. It's 
in Iran so long, but they're really selected to be hardy in this location. That will be have a certain amount of informal uh, arrangement to these plants. So we've got mostly small trees and then some larger shade trees, which you see here. And then the ground level planting will include um, ornamental grasses and native perennials. So they will provide some color and also habitat for wildlife butterflies. Um, that kind of thing. So we're really trying to not only restore this for people, but benefit um, nature as well. Um, the materials that we propose to use, these are the standard um, Parks Department light poles and benches. This is called the 1964 World's Fair Bench. Uh, the regular hexagonal block paving. And for a drinking fountain, uh, Parks Department is moving towards using bottle fillers with drinking fountains, so this will allow people to have less bottled water. You can bring your own bottle and fill it at that drinking fountain, and that's going to be a city-wide movement that they are going to be putting in a lot more bottle fillers in uh, parks as they're renovated. And then two heights of the drinking fountain so that people in wheelchair or people who can't bend over so well will both have an accessible uh, drinking fountain to drink out of. And then this is the existing railing that will be renovated. So that's really um, all that we have to show for you tonight. And as Lisa said, and I think we pointed out, this is really preliminary. We're not as far along as Rockefeller, so we're really just bringing this to you for information. We will have to go back to Parks Department, to the Community Board. We hope that we'll see you all again as this progresses, but if anybody does have you know, comments or wants to make any input, I guess this is a time that you can get in right on the ground floor.